Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. My name is Rob Radke, and I am the President and CEO of Episcopal Relief and Development. It's a pleasure to share my sermon with you today, the second Sunday in Advent. The power of the Advent readings always impresses me. The way the Old Testament prophecies of Isaiah are answered in the New Testament Gospels can be unnerving and unsettling. In today's reading, Mark quotes Isaiah, who in turn foreshadows John the Baptist as one crying out in the wilderness. John the Baptist is such an unusual character. He has to have been a real person. You can't make this stuff up about camel's hair and eating locusts and wild honey. There's a specificity that makes him vivid. John the Baptizer introduces us to a rite that is now a part of every Christian's life, baptism. We take baptism very seriously in the Episcopal Church. Each time we baptize a new member, whether an infant or adult, we recite our baptismal covenant. We make several important promises in the covenant, and it's worth reflecting on them for a few moments. Among the promises that we make are to seek and serve Christ in all persons. In addition, we promise to respect the dignity of every human being. It's not always easy to fulfill these promises. They put one in the position of trying to find Christ in some pretty unlikely people and places sometimes. Fortunately, Jesus gives us some practical advice on how to live up to our commitments. In Matthew 25, Jesus states it very clearly, feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, give water to the thirsty, and heal the sick. In some, he says, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Episcopal Relief and Development exists to enable all of us to extend Christ's love and healing to all members of Jesus's family, and especially those struggling with poverty, hunger, disaster, and disease by working together for lasting change. In addition to being the second Sunday in Advent, today, December 6th, is also St. Nicholas's feast day. In another happy coincidence, it also happens to be the 80th anniversary of Episcopal Relief and Development's founding. St. Nicholas has been eclipsed in the public imagination by our commercial infatuation with Santa Claus. St. Nicholas deserves a closer look, however, especially his commitment to those in need. Nicholas was born in the third century AD and lived in what is now today modern Turkey. Orphaned as a child, Nicholas was born into wealth. He was also a devout Christian. Legend has it that as an infant, he stood for three hours at his own baptism, demonstrating his commitment to follow in the example set by Jesus. Indeed, Nicholas took to heart Jesus's admonition to sell everything and give it to the poor. Not surprisingly, he was widely loved and admired for his generosity. Nicholas became a bishop at a very young age and dedicated his life to serving God. Many of the stories and legends about St. Nicholas chronicle his love for children, protection of those in trouble or need, and commitment to sailors and other travelers. St. Nicholas is a model of how to live a life of compassion and service, just as Jesus commands us in Matthew 25. Taking St. Nicholas and Jesus as our inspiration of how to live a Christian life, we are called to seek and serve those in need. Among those most in need and most vulnerable in the world today are children. Overseas in the developing world, the COVID-19 pandemic has erased nearly 20 years of progress by some estimates. As we prioritize needs arising from the pandemic, the needs of children, both our own and those around the world, need to be at the forefront of our minds. Episcopal Relief and Development's partners working on integrated early childhood development understand this and have been working tirelessly to ensure that vulnerable children, especially those under three, are getting the nutritional, health and developmental support they need to thrive and grow into productive members of society, despite the pandemic. Research shows that the first 1,000 days of a child's life are foundational, 
forming the basis for future learning, good health, nutrition, and overall well-being. This could not be more vividly demonstrated than in our integrated early childhood program, Moments That Matter. Last year in Zambia, I visited one of our early childhood development centers to observe the work. All of the children enrolled in the program had lost one or both parents. The caregivers were often grandparents and in some cases, older siblings. Hunger and disease are daily challenges for these children and their caregivers. To address these needs, we are focusing on ensuring that all children receive the medical support from the government to which they are entitled. In addition, we equip the caregivers with the knowledge, skills, and resources to ensure the children are getting good nutrition by promoting kitchen gardens and more diverse sources of food. Structured playtime and positive discipline practices are encouraged to meet children's developmental needs. Finally, we work hard to help families and in particular women develop alternative sources of income through micro savings programs. These micro savings programs are transformative. For example, in Kenya, where we're working, many families are dependent on small business income and farming, yet women suffer financial exclusion from mainstream financial services due to the high cost of borrowing. Three years ago, Asha, a single parent of two children in Migori County was facing many of these challenges. She had no proper income, food was a problem, her children had worn out clothes. She was low in spirit and had no confidence in herself. Fortunately though, she had trained as a tailor and she did have a sewing machine. She made 75 cents a day by patching clothes. Four years ago, we, along with our partner in Kenya, came to her community and facilitated the formation of micro savings groups. As a result, 19 women came together and each committed to saving $1 per week to accumulate savings to loan out funds to each other. After saving for a while, Asha was able to borrow money to buy materials to tailor new clothes. She built her business gradually, accessing fabric from suppliers on credit, purchasing two additional sewing machines, and eventually employing two women. Her business was a success, and she now regularly earns a good profit on the dresses that she makes. Now she and her family have enough to eat and have improved their shelter. Perhaps most importantly, Asha has become a woman of very high self-esteem. Her daughter is attending university and her son is due to complete his secondary education. This is just a small example of how the lives of families have improved as a result of the work that you have made possible through your generosity to Episcopal Relief and Development. By taking Jesus as your inspiration of how to live a Christian life, just as St. Nicholas did, you have made this important work possible. Thank you. Your generosity makes the brokenness of the world feel lighter and the possibilities in front of us more abundant. Focusing on the possibilities in front of us is appropriate during Advent. Indeed, Advent is a time for preparation, preparing the way for Jesus to come into our life at Christmas with all of his promise and joy. If you would like resources for your family and especially children to help you prepare, I invite you to go to our website to access our Advent Toolkit, which includes more information about St. Nicholas. In closing, I want to acknowledge that this year, the holiday season will be like any other in recent memory. At our household, we're thinking through how we will observe Christmas and keep our friends, family, and ourselves safe from the pandemic. So, as I end, it seems appropriate to share this prayer from Lady Julian of Norwich, who, writing during the plague in the Middle Ages, provides some guidance to us as we prepare to celebrate Jesus' birth in a few short weeks during this terrible pandemic. I take great comfort from her prayer, and I hope that you will as well. Lord, let not our souls be busy ends that have no room for thee or thine, but quiet homes of prayer and praise, where thou mayst find fit company, where the needful cares of life are wisely ordered, and wide sweet spaces kept for thee, where holy thoughts pass up and down, and fervent longings 
watch and wait thy coming. Amen. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you.